Hi, League of Funnel members. Hope you guys are doing well. All right, so today I'm actually spending time with my mentor, Hamid. Hello, everyone. <laughs> all right, so I usually spend Thursdays, uh, sometimes all day Thursdays, spending time brainstorming with my one and only. <laughs> his, uh, his name is Hamid. A couple of our, actually, uh, I think most of our League of Funnel students may be introduced, or I always mention about my mentor, but here it is. Um, today we're sharing our knowledge and today's topic is three things uh, Attorneys absolutely need to know in 2021. Okay, so we do the thinking for you guys So we could tell you exactly what those things are and what matters for you guys and I want this to be very interactive I want this to be very different from the other ones. So please as we're sharing or as things come up, please well as, as I'm doing this actually we got a student coming in right now as it comes in, please Post your questions below. I want this to be interactive. I don't want it just to be us sharing. And anything comes up, we'll address it right then and then as soon as you guys post, uh, post it, all right? So, Hamid, <laughs> I'll be handing it off to you. <laughs> okay. Um, hello, everyone. <laughs> Basically, some of the things that we wanted to cover to make sure that the, each uh, firm can, can, can benefit from the 2021 plan is un understanding and implementing the infrastructure within the practice as far as uh, how you start off with your process of doing the intake, doing the case management, and how you do, you know, uh, essentially closing your cases and measuring your ROI. That all has to do with the setup of the infrastructure within your practice. It doesn't matter how large or small the practice is. Every practice needs the infrastructure to operate properly and also be able to expand and grow. Without no infrastructure, no growth, basically. Okay, so let's break it down, Hamid. So I'm gonna turn this around. So first, number one is infrastructure. We're gonna write it down. And Hamid, what does infrastructure really mean in just practical terms? Practical terms is that how you get a case, how you start the case, <laughs> how you open it, uh, who gets to do what part of the case, very specifically identifying who does what with the case, how long it's supposed to take so the cases don't drag out, and essentially, what is the expected outcome of that client and the case? So that's the infrastructure, and then once it's set up, then it's scalable. So you can go from signing up 10 clients a month to 100 clients a month, because now you have a very defined process on how to begin with the case and end with the case. Okay, so um, I guess put in other words, it's dedicated people who know exactly what their roles are, and they do exactly that one task. So if you have somebody dedicated just for retaining. And then once they're retained, they're handed off to the operations who's handling the onboarding. And then the onboarding is handed off to, let's just say, the attorney. The attorney's doing their thing. And then there's a whole thing with settlement. So make sure you have dedicated infrastructure, dedicated people to, uh, for every role in your law firm. And the second part that we talked about is, now have me share with me, and I wrote this down, that's why I'm checking it, is workflow process so what does that exactly mean the work pro process means that every single client in a case follows the same process so you're not keep changing the process of how the client gets services how you sign them up and how you process the case so you use consistent again the consistency of the workflow make it scalable which means you can handle a lot more clients and this, and cases with the same set of resources and then you'll be able to scale based on the number of clients versus the resources that you need. And so that's very important to understand exact amount of resources that needs to get applied and what part of the process and what's the time frame from the beginning to the end of the case. Okay, um, so what that means for me, I think I always think about McDonald's, that everybody knows what they're doing and it's, it's, it's a workflow of this person's in charge of this, you do that and you only do this and you, it's, you basically write down every, the entire operations from beginning to end, who's doing it, what they're doing, and how long it's supposed to take, okay? So the what, the who, and the when, right? Absolutely. Good, that's exactly. the best way to say it. And once you got that, it's scalable, you can grow your practice. Great, so we got part number one, infrastructure. By the way, I'm gonna, I see you guys joining in, and I know most of you guys will be, um, whoop! <laughs> most of this, most of you guys, there we go. Let me make sure that we're back. Most of you guys will be watching this after, so please post, as you guys have any questions, please post it below. Uh, number two is virtual. <laughs> the 
buzzword of the year. I was kind of pushing for virtual before this whole pandemic using Zoom, Calendly, all those tools. And now for the past year, we kind of had, we're forced to use Zoom and Calendly. So it's a necessity. It's not whether you, whether it's a better business model or not, which is absolutely is, but it's a necessity. So for us, I wrote down some notes, virtual operation is first virtual staff. So why is that important? Why is virtual staff important? Again, because it's a scalable, you're not limited to one specific availability of resources in your local area. It is a lot less expensive and is more scalable to manage and keep the cost down. So when you're doing the virtual, starting from your intake staff or admins or whoever, we learned through this COVID time that not everybody needs to be sitting right next to you to be able to perform. People can actually perform remotely and sometimes more efficiently and at lower cost. The second part is being is not the virtual is not only about the intake staff, it's about the people who do the case management, who do the document retrieval, who are doing the client, you know, management, relationship management, even you know, the marketing part. All the marketing, we don't need to hire five marketing people to sit right next to us to do the marketing. I can outsource the marketing to five part of the country or even internationally to get the same amount of work done, probably about quarter of the cost and a lot easier to uh, obtain or exchange or remove. So um, the, the intake, the client management, the marketing, the support, everything can be done virtually. We definitely learned that during these times, especially even in the, in the legal industry where all the task like we talked about the infrastructure is the infrastructure is set up the process is clear so who cares where they're sitting as long as they're getting the job done getting a job a job done effectively and at lower cost which is becomes very important when your practice scales up and when we're talking about lower costs i really mean lower costs um, inside of a legal funnel program i teach our students a very good source of how to find these virtual assistants who can do essentially anything you could possibly imagine. And actually, just recently, last week, I had a, I asked one of my Legal Funnel students to get on a Zoom with me to give me feedback about the Legal Funnel program, and there was really good feedback that I got. And one of the great feedbacks that I got from him was, I, there was an entire module that I dedicated to delegation. Um, I think it was module five. I'll, I'll, everything about delegation and hiring virtual assistants, things like that. And what he shared with me is like, no, bring that up, bring that module up early so that you could learn about delegation. So you could learn, so we could learn how to be able to delegate, get things off our plate. Then we could do everything else, everything else that you teach us. And also to just say, if you also you get stuck in any part of the other modules, once you teach us how to find those people that can help with those different aspects when it comes to your marketing, your automating and things like that, your operations, then those, that, that source of us finding the right people, those people can help us do the rest. So that's that, virtual operation. And the third one is a clear plan and budget. So clear plan and budget. So Hamid is the king of this for every business. And it's pretty much at this point, he sets up businesses on a daily basis. And I think probably, I'm not joking, I'm not exaggerating. He's probably set up at least I don't want to make up numbers to exaggerate, but it feels like over a thousand easily. Um, different t types of law firms, different types of businesses, e-commerce to this, to that I could go on and on. And he knows what it takes to sit there in the beginning, write out a plan and what the law firm is going to look like for the next two years, either financially, the infrastructure, when it comes to hiring and everything and the marketing and the budget and every, every aspect of it. And he always does this upfront with everything that I start off with him. He always starts off with that. So if you, can you tell us about that? What does that mean? Clear budget and planning. <laughs> Absolutely. Sam. So basically everything starts with a plan and the plan has to be executable and realistic plan. So you're writing a plan of resources, the budget and expectation. And if you set that and have a discipline of actually executing the plan and the budget is it, it increases your, your chance of success in multiples because is one thing to create a plan, is something else to stick to it. So a lot of the attorneys I talk to, they say, oh, I'm gonna grow my practice. Oh, how, when, how much money you got? How much are we really willing to risk? You know, all of those factors are very important. You can't just say, I just want a lot more cases. But that doesn't work. It's like every case has a cost to it. It is a cost of client acquisition that you need to factor. And then you need to know 
how much of a resources you need to have once you get those cases to handle them properly. And that's all planning. So once you do the plan, that's 50% of the work. And then managing and executing to the plan is the more challenging part, which we usually get a lot of help to be able to implement the financial and the action plan. And it's also writing down stuff is like the one of the easiest, highest ROI things you can do. All it takes is however long, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour of you sitting down and writing down what you're planning to do. So many people miss that part, which is such an easy thing to do, right? Just sit there and write whatever you want to do. And just by you seeing that writing it down, you're way, way, way more likely for that to become reality. So make sure always before you do anything else, if you guys haven't done this yet for 2021, write out your plans, write out what that vision is. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just write it out. It's just like a paragraph form or bullet point. Write out exactly what you want that to look like. And then also there's another one. And then Natalia, thank you so much for your comment, by the way. If you guys are getting value from this, give it a like uh, right now. Please just give it a like. I want to see those likes. And the last one I want to give you guys is, is I think it's very important, especially in 2021, is fast execution. So fast execution, acting fast <laughs> because most people don't act fast. Most people have amazing ideas and don't act on it. They just sit there on it. They wait on it. They contemplate it. They, what about this? What about that? Hey, do you think this one is better or should I do it? Should I do this? Right? How many of those do you get? Absolutely. Which one is better, Sam? Should I do this or this? And then Hamid always taught me he's like both. I'm like one of both. <laughs> right? That's like right. the mindset, like one of both. So don't, Whenever you find yourself in conundrums of which one, or what if, or when, or who, it's you're, you're overthinking things. Don't think, just do. Execution empowers you to get results. The, the, the details get in the way. So fast execution. Practical example is, I just told Hamid just 20 minutes ago, I'm like, hey Hamid, you wanna do a Facebook Live? He's like, yeah, sure, sounds good, let's do it. And we're planning it, and I'm like, okay, great, let's do it now. I was like, what? I'm like, yeah, we're doing it now. So fast execution, right? I mean, absolutely. <laughs> when you come up with the inspiration or whatever you come up with, just do it. Don't wait. I hate like when people like come up with ideas or things like that. Like, oh, I'll t I'll set up a meeting with you on Tuesday. I'm like, Tuesday. If you have such a, if such an amazing idea, why are you waiting? Let's text me right now. Let's get on the phone. So don't wait. Uh, especially the world is getting faster and faster. Um, you know, the markets and the competition is also getting faster and faster. Uh, everything is becoming high variance, right? There's no, it's no more slow, slow growth, right? I right. mean, because of technology. Exactly. And everybody has a huge to-do list. And they sit down and they figure out they need to do a lot of stuff. But they don't get it done. They just keep adding to the list. So if you really want to achieve your goals, you got to make up the list and but have a due date for each of those lists. So you say, I need to do this now and I need to get this thing done tomorrow. If, if the task doesn't have a deadline or a schedule, it means nothing. It just means a wish list on the wall that someday, sometime, somebody should do it. But if you do making a task, if you don't need to assign a due date to it and you stick to it. So I want to generate some new leads. Okay, when? Tomorrow. Tomorrow you need to do take some action, sign up some contracts, get some lead generation going so you can get new leads. But not to think about it, research it more, ask eight more people. <laughs> By the time you actually make a decision, the whole market has changed. <laughs> And we see this on a daily basis. You know, the, both me and Hamid are exposed to a lot of lawyers. Uh, we talk to a lot of lawyers just from our different programs and different things that we do. And we could see who's, you know, throughout time, who's growing fast, who's not. Who's the ones who are still asking us questions or who are the ones who already took action and two years later, we see their growth. So make sure that you're one of those people who takes action fast, doesn't overthink things and just does it. Don't overthink it, just get over it. Um, other, other updates, Legal Funnel Session 6, uh, Legal Funnel is not going away, by the way, it's still live. Uh, we're continuing it. Session six will be starting in uh, less than two weeks on January 26th. If you haven't joined the program, make sure to go to, I'll put the links for, um, it'll be legalfunnel.com slash video. I'll put the links below for you guys to join. Um, I've also, because based on the feedback, I'm actually gonna make it a 12 week program. So instead of a six weeks program, it will be a 12 week program, we elongate it. The t so it gives you more time to actually execute the stuff that I do teach. That way, the first Tuesday, you guys get the, get the video, the training that you guys need to implement. You guys have a full week to implement it. And then the second Tuesday, we all join on Zoom, where we talk about kind of like a mastermind and networking and a mentorship, 
where we talk about it and we and right then and then we execute and we finalize and we do it right then and then. That means we, by the, by the second Tuesday that we meet, you should be able to finish the entire module that we implemented. So all this stuff, again, I've done this five times. I've been able to refine it over and over and it's only getting better and better. Ryan, I cannot wait for you. I know you already were part of the session five. I cannot wait for you to jo uh, rejoin us in, in session six. Um, and um, I'll be posting some of these notes. Ryan, thank you so much for posting that. Uh, posting the notes. I'll be posting some of these notes in the in the comment section below. And if please, if you got value from this, please give this video a like so more people can see it. And just so I could share it with you guys about who Hamid is. I'm like, some of you guys may know who he is, but it, and some of you may not. Um, it was a gentleman who was raised in Silicon Valley. I know he doesn't like me tooting his horn, but I'll do it. <laughs> he was raised in Silicon Valley. Uh, he was raised there for 20 years. He was part of um, the generation with Eric Schmidt, who was the executive at Google and all those guys. And he was part of, um, part of a lot of teams that were small teams to going, uh, to growing and going public multiple times. He was the president of Hitachi at one point. He was the head of mergers and acquisition, part of many, many big companies. And the, the common denominator was, it was always like small teams to scaling and growing really fast. So he was able to go th through that many times over and over. And through that exposure, now he's been, been able to take that experience and now he's, uh, he's been applying it for law for the past six or seven years. And now he helps other lawyers, just like how I do, to help them create their infrastructure, create their, their practice management. Um, when it comes to operations, basically anything outside of law, that's what he helps out with. Um, I introduced Hamid through our legal funnel program, so any of our students get exposed to him and his offers and his teachings and a lot of things that I teach inside of legal funnel flows through, I learn, I also learn from Hamid, and I share that to our students. So it's an ongoing teaching and learning uh, process and I hope to be your guys' mentor just the way that he is to me. I hope you guys got value from this. Hamid, any lasting words? No, just it. It's just about <laughs> execute, execute, execute. Don't think about it, just do it and do it. <laughs> move forward. And also don't look what everybody else is doing to grow your practice. Find a new ways to do it because it's usually more effective when you're not just following what everybody else does. Always find new ways and new techniques to grow your practice. Yep. <laughs> Wise man. All right. So please, again, if you haven't given it a like yet, give it a like. So I know you guys are there. And just give it a comment so that I know you guys actually watched this and got all the way through here. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care, guys.